Hey everybody, welcome to your final take home exam for Coastal this semester. Um, uh, you guys are all gonna do fine. Firstly, just take a breath. Um, you know the drill. Um, you wanna submit everything professionally, make sure there's no spelling errors, no grammar errors, et cetera, formatted properly, et cetera. Follow our ESRM um, style guide, um, all that good stuff. If you look in our schedule, it says our midterm is uh, Monday morning. I'm pushing that back to Wednesday morning. So this is due 10 a.m. Wednesday, December 8th. No late submissions will be accepted. So uh, go ahead and plan on submitting this before Wednesday at 10 a.m. That way, if you hit any hitches, you'll you'll be okay. You won't be bumping up against the deadline. Uh, this is a Turnitin assignment, so you must submit it through the website, through CI Learn. Um, I, I cannot accept them outside of that. Um, yeah, so basically, same stuff as before. Uh, uh, get everything on time. Do things well. Again, you have a choice of questions, just like you did last time. So there's 1A, 1B. Choose one of those to answer. There's 2A, 2B. Choose one of those to answer. And there's 3A, 3B. Choose one of those to answer. As before, my strong recommendation is uh, go ahead, take a look at the, um, at the final, and then try to answer without looking at anything, without Googling anything, without opening a video, nothing like that. Just try to outline for three, four minutes your answers to each of these questions. Try to see if you can bullet an outline, a, a strong point, strong arguments for 1A, and then try it for 1B. Pause, look and see which one um, were you able to outline more stuff, which, which one were you able to um, you know, get more detail on, and that's the one you should choose. Then you can return to that question and you can begin to flesh it out, go look up specific dates, specific numbers, quantities, etc. cetera. Um, uh, yeah, and so that's gonna be the approach. Again, I strongly encourage you guys to start this today, start working on it and working on it a bit each day and that'll take down the stress that won't make you uh, a, a barrel of nerves um, as we approach next Wednesday. So let's go through the questions really quickly here. Um, oh, I should also say that the data that we're talking about here is all linked from that is all linked from your um, uh, turn it in assignment there and so we have a uh, four possible data sets that you may or may not need depending on which question you answer again we have um, these opinion poll uh, data sets were the ones you saw in class this week so one is a the Excel version is just simply the summary statistics the other file, the CSV file, is all of the data. So if you want to do some, some of your own calculations, some of your own statistics, you're more than welcome to. The data is there. Um, but I, I would probably recommend starting with just the summary statistics, though, as, as you're starting to poke around and, and, and look for patterns and, and collect the data that would help you support your answer. We also have a Sifu data for that one. Again, we're using... As I mentioned in class, we're using um, an, an older class data set because we, our, our data will not be ready in time. It, it, you're, you're still turning it in. So, so I just grabbed an old data set. So just use that for uh, any answers that you need uh, seafood data for um, with regards to our seafood uh, point of sale surveys. Um, and then there's also another file here that depending on which, if you choose that question on U.S. per capita seafood consumption. Um, again, a, a simple file that you guys can crank through. Okay, so let's, let's read through these questions really quickly. Um, and question 1A is, uh, how does household income correlate with the public's propensity to eat seafood across the South Coast? In other words, is there a relationship between income and the amount of seafood people eat per week? To answer this, we have to use um, uh, our um, opinion poll data. And so um, make sure to use that data sheet there. When you answer this, I'm looking for basically a one paragraph answer. And I uh, want that to be supported with a professional data visualization, a professional figure that you generate. So you're giving me one paragraph and one supporting awesome figure. Um, you will describe a pattern that you find um, uh, describe any pattern that you find and propose a plausible explanation for it in that paragraph. So any pattern you see related to, to income and, um, um, and, and eating seafood. 
Uh, and don't forget to make uh, your figure awesome. Check your re all that kind of good stuff. You also want to include at least one external reference that speaks to the pattern that you see. So you do have to do a little bit of work here and go find um, some supporting evidence for your um, for your assertion. Or 1B, um, the USDA recommends that Americans eat an average of about eight ounces of seafood per week. What is the recent history of our seafood consumption in the U.S. and in Southern California? Note I said and here. So we have two data files there. We have sort of overall U.S. consumption data, and then we have our own personal uh, data in the form of our public opinion polling where we've been asking people how much seafood they're eating. So what is the recent history of our seafood consumption in the U.S. and in Southern California? In other words, does the overall American populace meet that eight-ounce target? And do we, in our local area, meet that eight-ounce target? Again, you're going to propose... Uh, you're going to write your answer in a one-paragraph response supported with a detailed, robust, professional figure. Um, and again, using those two data sets I mentioned, the, the one compiled from USDA and the one from our own um, data collection efforts over the years. Make sure to include, again, at least one new reference that directly supports your interpretation or speaks to some of uh, the patterns that we are um, uh, hearing about. Um, Number two, uh, two A, excuse me, describe MPAs, marine protected areas, detailing what they are and what they are intended to achieve. How have they been used in the past to manage marine resources and what are their key considerations? Detail three, three specific independent examples that illustrate shortcomings and then also three specific uh, independent examples that illustrate the benefits from marine protected area based approaches. That's 2A. 2B, describe Southern Californians' perception of their coastal resources. Are people here generally content with the state of the coast? Do they think everything's going great? Um, this answer is going to take you some time to articulate because you need to do a lot of synthesis here. Um, as you do that, be sure, and as you build your argument, be sure to support your general statements with specific evidence and specific numbers from our surveying of people's public, uh, 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 the public's op um, opinions and behaviors that they describe. Um, it can be from our opinion polls, it can be from our materials we discovered, uh, we covered this semester, it could be from stuff that we covered on our field trips, what have you, anything is available, um, including outside sources that, that could support, um, that could speak to people's perceptions of our coastal resources. Okay, so then on to the last questions. You have 3A and 3B as your final options. 3A is, is the general public here in coastal Southern California interested in seafood, in seafood sustainability? For this answer, draw upon our opinion polling, your own observations during your seafood surveys when you're visiting those markets and restaurants, our class lectures, and our qualitative discussions with wait staff and fishmongers over the last few weeks. Make sure to use all the relevant data you accumulated, including both seafood surveys and public opinion polls. So again, the question is, are, are, are folks in Southern California interested in seafood sustainability? Argue for or against um, with as much uh, specificity as possible. Again, as I noted here, um, I won't have time to get our this year's seafood survey data together. So I provide you another data set. Go ahead and use that for your answers as to whether the people are um, interested in sustainability or not of our seafood supply. 3B, what, it, what were the top coastal management news stories this year, meaning this calendar year, meaning all of 2021, not just in the fall? Draw from our scooped posts, in-class discussions, your own recollections, what have you, to create a list and summarize the five most important, significant coastal management uh, news stories, uh, you know, current events, developments in 2021. After you've detailed those five um, stories, those five events, those five issues, uh, then for each of those, detail how they speak to our key categories of global threats to coastal resource management and any other overarching themes we return to frequently um, this semester in class. So those are our questions, you guys. You're going to do great. Um, again, you're going to turn in only three, either 1A or 1B, 2A or 2B, 
3A or 3B, and this will be due Wednesday at 10. Good luck. If you guys get stuck on a logistics issue, by all means, feel free to, to send me a text and ask me a question. But again, I can't answer any material questions um, now that this is live. You guys have a great day. Looking forward to seeing you all uh, in class next semester if you're going to be around. And if not, I hope you guys have a great, uh, for everybody, I hope you guys have a great Christmas holiday season and get some well-earned rest. Thanks, you guys.